This is a video describing calorimetry calculations where objects that have high temperature are going to give up energy and objects that have lower temperature are going to receive energy. In this situation we have an aluminum cup that is 60 grams of mass. Inside the cup there's 50 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. What's the temperature of the aluminum cup? The water is at 20 degrees Celsius. So the aluminum cup is in thermal contact with the water. The aluminum cup will also be at 20 degrees Celsius. We're going to drop into the water 10 grams of ice that has a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. So it will not need to warm up before it starts to melt. It's already at the melting point. But it's all ice, 10 grams, 0 degrees Celsius. We are also going to put into the water 200 grams of lead that has a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. So the lead is our hot object, its temperature will go down, energy will leave the lead and go into the water, the aluminum cup, and the ice. We can describe this, uh, these energy calculations using Q equals MC delta T for the situation where temperature is changing for the lead, the water, and the aluminum cup. And we'll have to include a term for melting the ice, the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion for the ice. That will be the Q for the ice. After the ice is melted, that water will warm up. So there will be a Q equals MC delta T term for the water that used to be ice. And there will be a Q equals MC delta T term for the water that's there originally. Well, let's take a look at the uh, uh, equation here. If we start with the lead, 0.2 gram, two, 2 kilograms, sorry, converting the 200 grams to kilograms, 0.2 kilograms, I do this because my constant for the specific heat of lead is joules per kilogram. So I want the mass to be in kilograms. So on the table in our book, OpenStax College Physics, we find 128 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. The delta T for the lead, delta T means temperature final minus temperature initial. The final temperature is our unknown that we'd like to calculate. So TF was the symbol for that. 300 degrees is the initial temperature of the lead. Then for the water, 50 grams becomes 0.05 kilograms of water. The specific heat for liquid water, 4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Again, we do not know the final temperature of the water, so its delta T calculation is TF minus 20. Then I just noticed there should be a plus sign in front of this next term. Um, so right in here, let's go ahead and add in right now. For the aluminum uh, cup, it has a mass of 60 grams, so that's 0 0.06 kilograms. The specific heat is 900 joules per calorie degree Celsius. Again, delta T, same as the delta T for the original water. And then we have the term representing Q for the water that used to be ice. We have 10 grams of ice, so we'll have 0.01 kilograms of water when that ice melts. Specific heat of water, liquid water. And now temperature final minus zero. This water starts at zero degrees Celsius. It's not the original water that started at 20 degrees Celsius. And lastly, there is energy required to melt the ice. And something to be careful of in, in the tables where you look up uh, the latent heat of fusion. So here's the mass of the ice in kilograms. 334. Notice there is a kilo in, the, uh, in front of the joules. The specific heats are often given in joules per kilogram degree Celsius. But the latent heat of fusion kilojoules per kilogram. So don't forget to include that uh, uh, power of 10 when you do your calculations. So let's go a little bit further down now. Uh, we've added all these terms together and we're supposed to get zero. How is that uh, possible? Well, the lead term, the final temperature is going to be smaller than the initial temperature. So that will produce our negative sign that we need to uh, have our uh, result. Uh, as it should to come out to be a uh, addition of terms that adds to zero. One of those terms has to be zero. So you should inspect this, uh, should inspect the equations here and see if you agree with the uh, way it's been laid out. 
and let's go a little bit further down again a reminder on the uh, meaning of the Q the Q is negative if uh, energy is leaving the object that's going to happen for the lead and Q is positive if energy goes into the object the delta T's will, will have that uh, take place for the aluminum cup the original water and the water that used to be ice so I'm multiplying through here so 0 0.2 times 128 you get a number out in front distribute that on both terms inside the parentheses so the lead uh, calculation generates this uh, expression and then the water that was originally in the cup again the 0 0.05 times 4186 generates a number out in front of the parentheses we apply that to uh, what we have inside the parentheses and then the 0.06 times 900 distribute that through its parentheses the 0.01 times 4186 generates a 4186 times T final and there was a zero for the second term of the uh, uh, water warming up that used to be ice and lastly 0.01 times 334 kilojoules the, the uh, latent heat is 334,000 multiplying by 0.01 we end up with 3,340 joules for that term we have like terms here, terms that involve TF will gather together their coefficients 25.6, 209.3, 54, sorry, 54, and 41.86, add those together and hopefully you get this number and gather together the numbers, minus 7680, minus 4186, minus 1080, um, and plus 3340 we have this value, uh, add 9606 to both sides and divide by 330.76 we find 29 degrees Celsius for the final temperature we can at least say it's reasonable because it's in between the starting temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and the lead's temperature of 300 degrees Celsius um, it, you might think it's a little bit low but just take a look at the heat involved in melting the ice uh, 3340 joules that came out of the lead and uh, is a you know a substantial number so we don't get quite as high as temperature as you might expect if that's a calorimetry problem you write down the Q's MC delta T's and M times L and then you need to inspect to see you get a reasonable result if we would have had a bigger piece of lead a smaller piece of ice a higher temperature for the lead um, what would your impression be if you would have come up with temperature final being 102 degrees Celsius well that should raise a red flag we've gone across a phase change temperature for the water we've gone above 100 degrees Celsius so you'd have to use a little different approach and uh, bring the system up to 100 degrees Celsius and see what leftover energy from the lead is available then to make a certain number of grams of steam in a sort of a side calculation so be careful if your temperature uh, takes the system across a phase change point. You may have to do a little bit more detailed work. So work some sample problems, ask your instructor questions.